I don't think Kamala Harris is ever going to go on Joe Rogan. This is what cast I'm Matt. I've just been watching, I've, I've seen most of, pretty much all of the uh, the Joe Rogan interview with Donald Trump and it's trending everywhere. And for good reason. It's like uh, the question is, has Trump just won the election by doing this show? Nearly three hours sitting down with Joe Rogan. Um, on a long form podcast, normal conversation, no scripted answers, no scripted questions, no bias from anywhere, just a conversation about policies, about history, about things. Now, you might be sitting there getting really triggered, thinking, hey, eh, lying all the way through it. Fair enough. He could very well have been not known for his track record of honesty. Old Donald, right? I'm up and down with him all the time. Sometimes I think he talks some sense. Sometimes I think he's full of crap. A lot of the time he makes me cringe. Uh, a lot of the time during this election run, I haven't um, supported him at all. Um, but I've got the greatest of respect for people that will sit down without a script and talk for this long with people that they know could throw. I don't think Joe went a bit easy on him, to be fair, considering some of the things he said in the past. But there was always the the option that he could go in hard on certain things. Maybe he's just changing his mind. I don't know. The main thing is 26, 27 million people so far just on YouTube alone have watched this interview. Uh, that is a massive audience. You don't even take into consideration how many people have watched this on Spotify, which is where I watched it, uh, and listened to it even without watching it. And also on other social media clips and everything else we'll be getting to some of that stuff in a minute now could this swing the election um in there's a lot of people out there that kind of don't pay much attention they'll just look at things that, but there's a lot of podcasts especially if podcasts like joe rogan they'll watch it they'll think oh trump's a bit of a dick this should be funny i'll watch that and then some of the things he says might resonate with these people that are not in any kind of cult because maga is a bit of a cult and all these other side pretending to be excited about kamala harris uh that's kind of got a bit culty from what i've been watching recently anyway but the conversation was pretty good it doesn't matter uh if you think that um he talks a load of crap the point is that he was willing to do it without fear, right? Now, I some of the points he brought up are, are difficult to argue with. And I'm going to play a clip right now um, of one of one of them that is um, difficult to argue with. Let's take a look at this little clip right here. That, that certainly is, is a problem. Mail, mail and ballots are a problem. But every Another other problem country, you know, is other voter ID. Yeah, a voter ID. How voter about? ID is the most bizarre argument yeah. that I've never seen anybody articulate in a way that's convincing. Because why they you want to cheat. Need voter. Well, it doesn't make sense any other way. I've tried to straw man it, or I've tried to steel man it, rather. I've tried to like look at it from a position like, why would you not want people to have ID? And a lot of the ideas are... Cheat. Just ridiculous. The, you Gavin need an Newscom. ID to get a driver's license. Okay, but here's now the next step. Gavin Newsom, one of the worst governors in the world, for, and I used to, frankly, I used to get along, but I don't get along with him now because he's just too, you know, it's just a whole con job. But Gavin Newsom, the other day, signed a bill that you are not allowed to ask a person, even ask them whether or not they have a voter ID. Now, what could be Did a charitable ask, reason why anybody would Because they want to cheat. That? But that would be the cheat. only thing that makes sense. But that's taking it to the next level. Right. Now, you know, you have ID. The Democrat National Convention, when they had it the last time I saw, they had a sign, like a billboard, on the, the name of the person, where they live, how they live, who the hell their boyfriends are. Every single... It was and a big picture. That's for there. They have an ID, a big ID. It's, it was hanging like you were a prisoner. It, they had these massive cards, everything. And yet, when it comes to the vote, in theory, the most important thing we do. Okay, when you go to a grocery store, you give ID. But for a vote, it's supposed to be a sacred thing, and it, it should be a sacred thing. No voter ID because they want to cheat. Well, it doesn't make sense in any other way. I've tried to look at there's it. There's no other way. Uh, there's, I, there's no argument that anybody's presented that makes any sense. Why? You know the funny uh, thing, Joe? The Democrats, the people, they all think you should have it. In other words, you should have it. Yeah. Voting.
Mm, not sure about that. I've, I've heard a lot of people defending this. Can you defend this? This is one, one of the things that really confuses me. I know I'm not American. I know I'm not going to be voting in this election, but it's so weird that someone's saying that it should be illegal to ask anyone for ID. Surely everybody wants it. He's coming across there. Whatever you think of this person, he's coming across there like he wants everybody to prove who they are to vote. Surely that's a good thing to have a fairer election. If there's going to be complaints about election fraud and anything else like that, surely what is the argument against having a uh, voter ID? There is no argument against it as far as I'm concerned. Please, if you've got one, let me know. I don't know what it possibly could be. Surely we need to prove who we are to vote in elections. That should be uh, a given, right? I had to have ID this year for the election in this country. I had to take my ID with me to prove always no one had a problem with it. Over there, for some reason, it's seen as a, a massive problem. Let's have a look at some more. Before we do, um, Kamala Harris, uh, people that pretend... They pretended to be excited about this person. They was pretended to be excited about Biden when clearly nobody was excited about Biden. Biden dropped out. They're then com pretending to be excited about Kamala Harris. All these people on TikTok watch these debates. They're really, really cringe. And people pretend, oh, we haven't voting for Kamala Harris. It's so excited. She's talk speaking for the youth and all this sort of stuff, what they're saying. But they literally are just that's full of crap. Nobody's excited about Kamala Harris. They would be just as excited about a broom. They're excited about not Trump. That's what they're excited about. It could be absolutely anybody, but they're pretending to be excited about her. All of these people that are pretending to be excited about her, you need to now start a movement to get her to do something like this. Even if it's not Rogan, something with a massive audience, long form, no script, just speaking like a person, uh, open to any kind of questions, just sitting there vulnerable, having an opinion and speaking, even if, again, nobody agrees with anything Trump said and think it was all bullshit, that the fact that he's got the balls to sit there and do it is a testament to him and it will definitely swing swing voters in his favour. We'll have a look at some of that in a minute. But will she do it? I don't think she will do it. Uh, more on that in a minute. Let's have a look at some of this... Um, some of the the uh, the TikTok, the sorry, the Twitter um, or X, as we should say, comments on this. Joe Rogan interview with President Trump gets 26 million views on YouTube. Just one day record breaking. Absolutely. This is the this is the future. You, the news is not going to compete with this. Right. Uh, Joe Rogan would have her in tears on what he's responding to there. I watch Joe Rogan all the time. He's very balanced, but also has an interest in everything. I watched the cast with Trump and rather enjoyed it. Trump always makes the point, even if someone, sometimes he doesn't use flowery words. As for camel toe, that's what he's called now. Uh, you will just get, uh, you're just a scratch record. She, I've never seen her look relaxed. I've never seen her just having a conversation and looking relaxed. It's so weird. Uh, Joe Rogan Trump interview Rogan showed that it has proven time again namely Trump is and must be the only choice probably these people are probably already Trump fans to be fair before this um, Donald Trump discusses presidency and future plans on Joe Rogan experience in three hour interview uh, Joe Rogan is an entertainment podcast it's a bit salty this one there but it's just there it's not news don't have to don't matter just la 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 doesn't matter what these people think millions and millions of people have watched this and been swung by this cope however you need to you get your get your candidate on there. If she's so wonderful, if she's so inspiring, if she's so exciting, you should want her on there. Get her on there to um, to talk up, to say all of her policies, to get everybody back on her side. Couple of weeks to to go. Get her on there. I don't think Kamala Harris is ever going to go on Joe Rogan or anything else. She's going to be hidden away, just like Biden was in the last election. Uh, love this guy and Rogan too. Uh, there were several tales about DJT during his three hour weave with Joe Rogan. Pompeo differences with R, uh, RFK and on oil extraction pressure from big farmer Israel. Genocide support. Here's our only hope. Sigh. Uh, begrudging there. Um, yeah, so what else we got here? Seems like Joe Rogan wanted to duck and dodge. Uh, so basically he was saying that, um, he asked him about his ear. That was quite a funny thing. And he had like a, 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 a tiny little scar on his ear, apparently. Um, Newsweek trying to say Trump lied on Joe Rogan's podcast despite industry news outlets supporting his claim. I don't know what that claim was. Kamala is one. Kamala could never have a three hour unedited, another thing, uh, conversation with anyone, much less Joe Rogan. She is incapable of making it through a town hall with Cooper Anderson on CNN. Harris is simply unqualified and it's blatantly obvious to anyone with half a brain time for her to be fired. This is obviously, he's replying, I think, to... Um, 
Elon Musk there. But yeah, that was weird, wasn't it? She'd done that interview and it got edited. She, she, she sounded so stupid with her response that they just couldn't put it out that way and edited it. Someone defend that. Like, I don't care how excited you pretend to be for this person. Defend that. The actual news, supposed to be unbiased, the news that's supposed to be factual. This is just entertainment. The news are putting it out with an edited version to make her look better. Why are they doing that? That is that not electoral interference. Uh, and then he's got um, talking about UFOs. That was a bit of a weird conversation. So we should go watch this whole conversation. Any presidential candidate should also uh, should be able to have a relaxed, unscripted, unedited conversation with Joe Rogan. If they can't, there's something seriously wrong. Absolutely. That's exactly what I believe. Um, and that's what I've been saying all the way through this. What do you think? Let me know um, in the comments. And uh, who are you voting for? Has this changed your mind? I really want to hear that. I bet it ain't. A lot of this is very culty. Any Trump supporter would think this was the most wonderful thing that's ever happened. And anyone against Trump will just sit there eye rolling all the way through and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, would you trust your candidate on this show? Would you? Would you trust exciting Kamala that you're so excited to have in a three hour interview? I've never seen her not laughing hysterically and uh, looking nervous and answering like a child. Uh, any que any hardball question she's ever been asked. And I don't even if he went easy on her. He said the uh, the um, the invite is there. And I've just read on X before I come on and did this that um, scheduling problems means she won't unfortunately won't be able to do it. I'm going to make a prediction. If she doesn't do it, I think that very well, unless something happens in the last next couple of weeks or whatever's left, maybe 10 days, what is it? I think that could very well have swung it in Trump's favour. If she goes on there and makes a good account of herself, I think it will swing it in her favour. I think it's likely if she went on there, and I think most people know this, she would look absolutely terrible and it would tank her run. Um, that's what I think. What do you think? Let me know. See you later.